true in those cases? Well, that's the point of this table that we see uh, on our paper here. Um, <clears throat> so this table gives the proportion of values in the normal distribution that are less than the given standardized value Z. And they, you have that illustration right there, okay? It is clear that it is showing the proportion that are below that value. And I'm emphasizing that because people they overlook that. They get it mixed up with, okay, well, between what is their deviation of 68%, they, they start mixing up those ideas. So this, we call it a Z table, um, shows you the proportion that are below that specific uh, standardized value, okay? Um, but if your distribution is not normal, you technically can't use this. So all of the ones that we're going to look at today are normal. So, uh, for example, we just looked at um, that problem we just had, Misha Barton, was 1.4 standard deviations above the mean for women. So you find that z-score on the table here, and you look at the, the column right beside it, it says the proportion below is 0.9192. But we don't really talk about proportions all that much. We usually talk about percentages um, or percentiles. So that means she is taller than 91 0.92% uh, of women. That would put her at the 91st percentile if we were talking about what percentile of height she was. She's taller than approximately 91, almost 92% of women at that height. Okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to use that table to answer these questions for problem number one. Suppose that a value from normal distribution is two standard deviations below the mean. What proportion of the values are below it? What proportion are above it? Now, two standard deviations, that's a value that we've worked with. Before having this table, what would be an answer to this question? If it's two standard deviations below the mean, what proportion are below that number? Two point five. Two point five, right? Because within two standard deviations, we had what, 95% that were within two standard deviations? So that means we got 2.5% left over here and 2.5% down here. Okay, so 2.5% would be below. Let's see what the uh, table says about that. Let's um, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so two standard deviations below. We're talking about negative 2 here for our z-score because we're two standard deviations below. So you can see the proportion below. Move your decimal two places to the right. So this says 2.28%. Okay, so it's pretty close. Um, these tables are just a little bit more specific. They're a little bit more accurate. So 2.28% are below. So what proportion are above it? What do we need to do? Subtract that from 100. Or we could take the uh, proportion number and subtract it from 1. Either way. And I didn't get my subtraction symbol in there. Okay, 97.72% are above it. If you were two standard deviations below the mean. Okay, so if you're below, you got to look at the negative. If the value from a normal distribution is 1.3 standard deviations above the mean, what proportion of the values are below it and above it? Okay, again, looking at the table, this is above the mean, so we're looking for positive 1.3. And we look for its value on our table, and that is 90.32. 90.32. Are below it, meaning we've got what uh, 60.68 nine, 9 9.68 above it. That would make 100%. Okay, now let's look at C. C's worded kind of interesting, interestingly here. C says, based on the table, what proportion of values 
are within one standard deviation of the mean, within two standard deviations, and within three standard deviations. So we know in general that should be what? 68, 95, and 99.7. Let's see uh, what the table says it is. So we need to look at one below, so negative one. The proportion of values below that is 0.1587. Okay, the proportion below one standard deviation is 0.1587. So I'm going to write that down. 0.1587 is negative one. Positive one. The table says 0.8413 are below it. Okay, so we want to know, well, what percent is between those two? Okay, so what do you think we need to look at numbers? Subtract, right? Because this is from negative one below, this is from positive one below. <clears throat> so if we subtract those proportions there, 0.8413 minus 0.1587, we get 68.26. So again, that pretty much confirms what we learned the other day. Um, did I say 26? Yeah. But it's just a little bit more specific. It's not exactly 68, it's a little bit more than 68. Let's do the same thing for two standard deviations. Okay, uh, Let's look at the number for negative 2 and positive 2, and we're going to subtract. So the number for positive 2 is 0 0.9772. 97.72% of our data is below two standard deviations. Well, we want to get rid of the overlap of the uh, proportion that's below two standard deviations below, so we subtract the number right here, 0 0.0228, and we get 95.44. Again, very, very close to our idealized number, so to speak. And then let's look at three. We've got uh, 0 0.0013 for minus three. Nine nine eight seven for plus three. I just forgot my minus three number. Ninety nine point seven four. Okay, ninety nine point seven four. <coughs> so it pretty much confirms what we learned. A little bit extra detail to it, a little bit more precision. <coughs> okay, <clears throat> uh, let's go through number two together as well, just to make sure that everybody's kind of got a handle on it. We're using the same data that we used uh, in the previous investigation for the heights of men and women, um, and we're going to answer some questions about percentiles as opposed to standardized values. So Miguel is 74 inches tall. What is his percentile? So before we can find his percentile, we've got to find his standardized height. We've got to find his standardized value. So we need to um, subtract 74 minus the average for men and divide by the uh, standard deviation for men. Now, I don't think that I've seen anybody do this as I've been walking around, but make sure when you're calculating this, guys, Either you do it in two steps, you subtract the numerator and then divide by the denominator, or you put the numerator in parentheses if you want to do it all in one step. Okay. If you do not, your calculator follows the order of operations, meaning if you just type this in, 74 minus 68.5 divided by 2.7, in the order of operations, Multiplication and division comes before addition and subtraction. So when your calculator reads that problem right there, it's going to do that division first at the end, 
So it's going to divide 68.5 by 2.7, and then it's going to subtract that answer from 74, and it's going to give you a very, very, very different answer. Okay, now hopefully you would pick up on that, but you would be surprised. I have seen that answer on a quiz before, okay? Um, so just make sure that you type that in correctly. So uh, we get 2.037. So let's look at our table. Obviously, it doesn't get that specific. It only goes to one uh, place after the decimal. I have seen tables in like college textbooks where it gets a little bit more specific, but ours only goes to one decimal place. Um, so you just need to look and see if that would round. This one does not. So we are looking at like right around two standard deviations. Okay, so 2, you look for a positive 2 on your table, 0 0.9772, and it asks for the percentile. So percentile, remember I mentioned yesterday, <clears throat> uh, you just, you, you drop the decimal, okay? You do not round up. Do not round up on percentiles. So we would just use the 97 here. Is that the 97th percentile. 97% of men are the same height or shorter than Miguel. And uh, let's see here, 74 would be like <coughs> six foot two. <coughs> Gotta be honest, that's not very tall to me, but my dad's six foot nine, so I have a little skewed perspective there of height. So, <coughs> anyways, fun fact, fun fact about Miss Ribbon. My mom's 5'5", five five, so that's why I ended up only 5'9". All right, um, let's look at Jackie. Let's check out her percentile, okay? Um, she is 62 inches tall. She is below average, okay? Mm -hmm. She is below average, so this number should be negative, so we should be looking at a percentile less than 50, right? I'm just mentioning that. Um, <clears throat> so you're thinking this when you're doing these problems, so that when you get your answers, you know whether they make sense or not. She is 1.4 standard deviations below. So let's look at our table for negative 1.4. And you can see here, um, she's at the eighth percentile. She is at the eighth percentile. Only 8% of women are shorter than she is, which uh, I can believe. 62 inches is only 5 foot 2. That's pretty short, even for a woman. <coughs> Sorry if any of you are 5 foot 2. I don't think. Fairly tall girls in here. Okay. Abby's 5 foot 8 inches tall. What percentage of young women are between Jackie in part B and Abby in height? So just adding another little twist to this. So first of all, we've got to convert feet to inches. Five foot eight is what, 68? And that'd be 68. So let's find her standardized value, 68 minus 65.5 over 2.5. Okay, uh, she is exactly one standard deviation above but the question is, what percentage of young women are between Jackie and Abby? So let's look at our table. We need to uh, find the proportion for one standard deviation above the uh, mean, and we need to subtract the proportion for 1.4 below. So we've got 0.8413 minus the point. 0808. So 76.05% are between 76.05% are between Jackie and Abby. Between 5 foot 2 and 5 foot 8. We've got 76 3 fourths approximately of women. Okay, let's look at D and E. Another twist on the question. Gabriel is at, at the 90th percentile in height. What is his height? Okay, well, we've got to start with the table here. Okay, we've got to start with our table. If he's at the 90th percentile, that means...